Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about Year in Finance. As always, you can uh, read the respective article on ElementalCrypto.com, uh, which I will link out to in the slide notes. Um, so let's let's visit the basic premise of Year in Finance. Um, let's say I, you have a, some stable coins that you want to invest in a DeFi protocol, and you have a, a range of options. Uh, naturally, you decide to choose on uh, this the protocol that offers you the, the highest uh, rate of return and this is something that you do manually you choose the protocol you move your funds there and end of story well yarn is a tool that automates this process for anyone to direct their investment to a protocol with the highest yield now uh, in terms of yield strategies there's two main ones so the first has to do with uh, DeFi lending and borrowing platforms, and the second uh, with liquidity pool fees. So DeFi lending and borrowing is like you want to save a stable coin, let's say you have 20 DAI, you put it into the, into the protocol. Uh, if somebody borrows uh, from this uh, pool of money, uh, then they pay interest, uh, which you uh, earn as a result of providing your, uh, your funds to the protocol. Uh, and then the second way to earn a, um, a fee is to provide liquidity to a decentralized exchange. So let's say you provide equal value of two crypto assets. In this case, to keep it simple, I've used two stable coins. So you, you added two to 20 DAI and 20 USDT uh, to, the, um, to Uniswap, for example. And then people can use these to trade one for the other. So someone wants DAI. They take DAI, they put in USDT, and, they, and the protocol takes a cut, which it gives to you, the liquidity provider. That's uh, how AMMs and liquidity provision works in, the, in a very uh, quick um, summary. But I'll have a separate session on uh, I have a separate session on uh, on Uniswap as well, and how it works in more detail. Um, so let's talk about how Yearn was uh, crea created. Uh, um, so this uh, uh, person is Andre Cronje. He's a he's a, a a lot of you may know him. He's like um, a key figure in the crypto space, and this is how he uh, became um, known. So he had a problem. He didn't want to buy crypto and speculate on the price appreciation of Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. So he decided to convert his um, had in, earned savings into stable coins or some proportion of them and decided to find ways to earn a yield on them um, and what was happening is that uh, he would wake up every morning and move his funds around depending on which protocol was offering the highest yield so this was very repetitive and obviously there's a cost associated with it because we're talking about stuff on the Ethereum network, so you have to pay gas fees every time you transact. Um, and this person being a coder, uh, you know, there's nothing more that coders hate more than doing repetitive things that are costly. So I immediately thought, okay, this is an option. This is an opportunity uh, to try to automate this uh, process. And this is how uh, Yearn was born. Or, or originally, it was called Iron. Um, then it, he, he decided to switch to Y, as in as in U earn, um, and it's written in Solidity, so the the coding language used on the Ethereum network, and basically it's very simple. The code compares yields across protocols and sends the money to the protocol that has the highest yield, um, and then as more and more people join this protocol that was open for anyone to join, uh, gas fees also were shared across the pool of participants so let's see how this works um, let's say I have some uh, DAI right DAI is a stable coin that equals one US dollar now the Oracle uh, the, the Oracle is what uh, Andre Cronje um, coded it's a, an internal uh, data feed if you like uh, that finds where the highest uh, annual percentage rate is and then every time there's a deposit or a withdrawal from Yearn, uh, it reallocates uh, funds. So it will take. It may. It may have started off seeing that Aave offers the highest return and have placed the funds in Aave, but then someone deposits or withdraws, 
and it reevaluates its uh, strategy and it may see that okay right now compound is offering a higher rate of return so let me sh shift funds over to compound then to uniswap and, and so on what's important to note is that yearn will assume you want to stay in the currency that you deposited so if you deposited usdt uh, it it will only work with uh, uh, the in, within usdt whatever it does so there's separate strategies per um, cryptocurrency. Uh, if we want to get a little technical, uh, remember that uh, things, you know, DeFi works with uh, this concept of an equity token or a, or a receipt, if you like. So what happens is when you deposit your 100 DAI, for example, into uh, Yearn, uh, you get Y DAI in return. And Yarn takes your DAI, deposits it in Aave, for example, because that's where the highest interest rate is at the time, and in return gets a DAI. Um, now, let's say uh, it's going to switch strategies because uh, someone else has deposited into Yarn. Uh, it gives back the a DAI, gets DAI back, um, and invests it into Compound. Now. In the meantime, it's earned some interest. So I've said that you, you know, you've put 100 die, but for example, when you take it out of other, you may have 110 die, um, and then and, and so on. So this is purely the mechanics of how it works. Uh, the reason they choose to do this this way is because it's, it, you know it was an, an an innovation copied from Compound originally, and it just makes it easier to program things. Um, from a developer's uh, standpoint. Um, of course, Yearn evolved over time uh, as it came into, as it became uh, larger in scale. So what was happening as it became larger in scale, it started affecting uh, interest rates. It's one thing to put a hundred die into a protocol, but it's different to put a hundred million DAI into a protocol. This can greatly affect the interest rate of uh, of the protocol that you're investing in. So, how so you have the the, the 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 original question of where is the highest yield, but then you have the question: Okay, how will yield change once those funds move into the protocol? Uh, and he, Andre, was saying that you know I need to, there's all these other dimensions that I need to think about. How liquid is the protocol is one. How long has it been around? Uh, are founders known or anonymous? Did they receive VC funding? So all these indicators of the quality of the, of the protocol. And then there's also an, an added uh, dimension to consider, which is the governance token rewards. So if you're investing in Compound, for example, you, you, you also get rewarded in comp tokens, which have a value on the market. So this is extra yield that, that needs to be accounted for. Uh, and when things become complex, you know, the best way to address them is to ask uh, the crowd. So you crowdsource the solution. And this is kind of uh, what uh, Jörn has done. So uh, on, I'm sure you've come across threads on Twitter that look something like this, which looks like completely, uh, you know, stressful and hard to understand if you if you're not really into these uh, uh, protocols. So you take this, move it there, move it to somewhere else, get something else, put it back, loop it through and all that kind of stuff. And as uh, complexity grew, Jan sought, uh, you know, wanted to make things simple for the average investor. So you had the experts like this person here moving money around in innovative ways. So the question is, how do you share that knowledge uh, with people who don't want to necessarily learn or about all the tiny little details about each of these protocols. And this is where we have the entrance of Yearn Vaults. So if you go uh, to Yearn Finance, you can choose a vault. This is uh, equivalent to a mutual fund. Um, so instead of implementing complicated strategy on your own or trying on, or on your own or trying to copy them, you let someone else design a strategy for you, and then you just transfer your funds. The strategy executes. Uh, by code, something that is designed uh, by people who are more experienced. Um, how this works is that anyone can propose a vault strategy and they earn uh, a fee for doing so. 
this proposal is reviewed by peers and then once it's approved the vault will go through a testing period so there'll be a deposit cap on uh, the amount that can be deposited into the vault and once the committee approves the final um so th there is a committee that approves the final product and they'll you know they'll look at who the people behind the strategy what audits have been made and and, and so on uh, and, and once they approve, it goes through a multi-signature process to, to get the final seal of approval. Now, vaults uh, follow, obviously follow more than one strategy. Like we said, you can earn interest by lending. You can become a liquidity provider. You, there's also the, 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 you know, the added bonus of end, earning governance tokens. And then you can also, you could potentially use these funds as collateral and borrow um, something to reinvest in all of the above. Uh, and, you know, through different combinations across hundreds uh, of protocols, you can do, a, you can have a lot of, a, a large variety of vaults. Um, like we said, it goes through a vetting process to, to make sure that it's uh, low risk, but risk is hard to quantify. For example, one of the largest vaults holds a lot of ETH. Um, so if ETH is stuck in the vault, then no one is selling, so it's propping the price up. So the, the, you, know, you don't know how each of these can have knock-on effects on the rest of the crypto industry when things get difficult. Uh, you know, being decentralized, etc., the, the, the code is there for everyone to see. Uh, so it's assumed that, you know, highly enthusiastic analytical people are scrutinizing it. But that is a big assumption to make. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is happening. So, uh, and, and you see even here in one of the largest strategies here, you know, it, 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 said, you know it, it says, I don't have a description of this strategy yet. And yet and there's so many people in, investing in it. So Andrew Cronier himself says, you need to understand what's going on before you invest. Uh, let's look at quick, a quick example. So this is one of the vaults uh, on Yan. Uh, it takes uh, some amount of the funds and supplies supplies wrapped ETH to Curve. So because ETH is not an ERC ERC twenty coin, you need to create a compatible version called wrapped ETH. Mm -hmm. Curve is a decentralized exchange for stable coins. So you you, you supply it to Curve and then you earn. As a liquidity provider, you earn uh, rewards. Uh, you also get curve tokens, uh, which the strategy will sell, sell for more uh, wrapped teeth, which it deposits back into the strategy. So that's one component. The other component is that it stakes wrapped teeth on Lido.finance. So this is a staking platform for ETH 2.0, because as you know, ETH is going to do the so-called merge, which will move it which will make it transition from a proof of work to a proof of stake uh, platform. Uh, then we have another de decentralized exchange called Balancer. So the strategy supplies ETH to Balancer in return for BAL tokens and trading fees. And then again, all this stuff gets these fees and the and the BAL token gets get redeposited back into the strategy. And then again, the same thing with Tokemac, which is which is another um, uh, decentralized exchange. Yearn also has a special relationship with Curve, that the decentralized exchange for stable coins. So uh, it has this liquidity pool where it's easy to convert between YDAI, YUSDC, YUSDT, and YTUSD. Um, why would you want to do this? Like we said, if you choose one stable coin, it will assume you want to stay in that stable coin. But by having this liquidity pool, you can switch to another one if you so desire. Uh, you can earn transaction fees as a liquidity provider by providing liquidity to the liquidity pool here. And also you earn curve tokens as a liquidity provider. Um, in terms of governance, governance is interesting. Yearn uh, had a fair, la fair launch, which means no governance tokens were pre-allocated to founders or investors. And Andre, when Andre Kronia made the distribution of 30,000 Wi-Fi tokens, uh, he didn't keep any for himself. So it's a truly decentralized project in the hands of the community. Decisions about the protocol are voted on by Wi-Fi uh, token holders. 
and the protocol generates its own fees in order to cover expenses uh, and any remainder goes to the token holders. Uh, it's interesting that supply is uh, fixed. This means that uh, YFE tends to be relatively high in price. However, uh, Andre has criticized this as, you know, what, as, a, as a little bit strange in that there really isn't no, there isn't any economic value in the uh, YFE token apart from being able to vote. Um, in terms of merges and future steps, Yearn has merged with other exchanges and protocols such as Cream Finance, SushiSwap, Pickle, Acropolis and Cover. It's also launched on uh, Phantom and they plan to continue uh, launching on other chains, as many protocols do. Uh, also important to notice to note that um, uh, Andre became a little bit disillusioned with a, with the whole uh, process of making a DeFi uh, pr a protocol. So essentially, this person didn't seek any VC funding. It was just ended up being a one a one man show that was flooded with capital. Uh, he'd put out a lot of warnings saying you shouldn't blindly invest in some sleep deprived developers code. Um, and after turning in the keys to the community, he also became involved in many other crypto projects. The most famous of these is Phantom. And then also he was recently planning to launch a new project that was something similar to Olympus DAO. But uh, he decided to call it uh, quits. So in a post that his uh, partner posted, uh, he said, you know, we're closing out uh, the chapter of contributing to the DeFi crypto space. So he, he, he'd been exhausted. Um, he, he found himself, you know, from introverted, enthusiastic crypto geek to kind of a crypto playing the role of crypto politician. Suddenly, if people hadn't made, if the price of Wi-Fi or, or um, the yields on yeah, and didn't continue going up to infinity, people, some people were unhappy about this and uh he became tired of um the complaints um some closing remarks on yearn uh like we said it's a simple tool to maximize yields anyone can use complex yield generation strategies without designing them um mind you that in the early days yield was very high uh, during the the DeFi summer and this, uh, you know, the, the bull run. So you had yields of 60 to 90 percent. Like today, they're much, much lower. Uh, Andre has left, but that shouldn't matter because it's a truly decentralized uh, project that's uh, now maintained by the community. Um, so th thank you very much for, for watching this. Um, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter or sign up for my newsletter. Thanks.